Let's make a delicious cake for Mario. Best of luck with Hyper 6 tonight, bud. Thanks for the race. Thanks, dude. I enjoyed it, even if I sucked. I know. <laughs> I know. Have a good night, bud. Night. Dear Mario. I never stop not enjoying things like that. game seems like fun, you should play it and then commit yourself to finishing the whole thing, irrespective of whether or not you're enjoying it. Very funny stuff. Yeah, you'll be so lost on the lore tracks if you don't play Hyper 1 through 5 first. Last half of the last level. Yeah, I wanted to try doing essentially what um, what Glacom was doing, but I'm not sure I want to wait as long as I would need to for the fish to get all the way out of the way. Perfect. I mean, there is a level after this one, but it's nothing. There's nothing to it. Uh, yeah, he'll swim off the top of the screen if you wait long enough. There's another level after this one, yes. It's not a rumor. If you mean another game after this one, there's demos for it. Yep. Just killing a reskin Chuck to... He just- he just looks like Baby Bowser, that's it. Bowser Jr. J.R. Bowser. I really did need a break from this game, but now that I'm playing it again, I'm actually not hating it. I mean, it's frustrating, obviously, but... 
I was really dreading playing this game again, and it's not as bad as I was feeling. I think I was just burnt out on how punishing this game can be. Nope, Fugu Manning does not get killed by... by cape spins. But it doesn't matter because I can't deploy my cape anyway. sometimes drifts far enough down that I can't uh, kill him. I just fall in the lava. I don't understand why that is. It's a detail I never knew about Koopas, that they sometimes spawn at different heights. Hey, thanks, BK. I gotta, I had such a bad angle there, I should have adjusted my left-right speed.
Well, the fight against Nightmare in Kirby's Adventure, they don't really expect you to be here this long, so... I mean, that fight takes, what, like, two or three minutes tops? If you're doing bad. Bloody tears, this is bloody tears. Yeah, I could I could live with that. I won't beat this tonight. It's very sweet of you to suggest I will, but we have to we have to keep it we have to keep our expectations reasonable. I'm only gonna be streaming for another two and a half hours or so. And there's just I gotta be honest, the the likelihood seems close to zero. Yeah, what's up, you Mario? You got any tips for beating this level?
Bloody tears, this is bloody tears, this is bloody tears, yes it's bloody, bloody, bloody tears, this is bloody tears, yeah it's bloody tears, it's the song you all know. I haven't even gotten that far, you Mario. The furthest I've gotten is most of the way through the Koopa Room, the Flying Koopa Room. Really? The water room feels like it's gotta be the worst one. Are you serious? I don't care about RNG as long as the RNG always rolls in my favor. One star, the highest difficulty? How does your star system work? I don't know what makes this level so hard for me, but I feel like even with as difficult as it is, I'm having a harder time than most people do. But I guess that's where I get into trouble, is comparing myself to other people. Who cares what other people do? Yeah, you're right, Sophie.
I don't know what it is on average. I know Link Dead took, what, 12 hours, he said? There's no promises, but I'm planning to tentatively, unless I like burn out and need a break from it, I plan to play Hyper 6 through the weekend. I'd love to get this done. I'd love to just be done with it. I trust Link Dead's judgment, and he said that this is harder than Left Barrier Tower. You also rem have to remember, we've been on the we've been on the second half of this for a while. We were also stuck on the first half of it for a very long time. How's the Hyper Six? Bad. Because it's Hyper Six. Yeah, I know that that's brain pollution, doing that, but sometimes I can't help it. Forty something for any percent. Yeah, Spud four three four three four three has it. Why do I keep rushing? Why do I not stabilize? Spud's done two runs, I believe. His first run was like nine hours and they cut it down to six. Remember to hydrate? 
Waters for winners. I'll go get a drink in a few minutes. I don't have a drink near me. The 70 star? Yeah. No. Dang. Oh, they told me you were playing Hyper 6, so I just wanted to check out there. Yes, I'm doing okay. Still more like fun. Nope. Can you bring me a Red Bull? Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. What yeah. what race? Um, I was practicing for the, one of my charity events in our race week. It's a seat that should have taken over an hour and a half, but I did it in 105 and got seconds. So. Nice. I'm proud of you. I still got it. <laughs> You're the best. Room sucks. No progress so far, Melos. I haven't been playing that long. I just got done with some 
I guess I'm 64 with my good bud smart ball. I doing there? Hey, whatever blows your hair back. I don't think there's any Yoshis anywhere in this game. I guess it should be obvious that there's no Yoshis in this thing because none of the castle levels have the no Yoshi intro. The problem is that I've, I've been doing this for a while, but I don't feel like I've developed any consistency. Like, the water room is super inconsistent for me. The, uh... Even the rooms before the water room are pretty inconsistent for me. Uh, buddy! Oh, 
Nope, Fu Manon swims up until it finds the top of the water. Since this is a water level, there is no top. Also, it's not Big Bertha. The English name is Porku Puffer. Big Bertha is specifically the big mouth fish in SMB3 that has baby fishes swimming around her. Boss Bass, correct. Great. Well, Melos, that's a really good question, and one that I actually do think that I'm actually I'm well equipped in the situation to handle. Uh, to handle, um, it's because Haimari doesn't like anyone. Is there required damage in this hack? I can't I can't offhand think of any required damage either. Oh, well, special world. Never mind. God, no, like that. Absolutely not. Maybe, maybe Haimari was just having a bad day when he made this hack, you know what I mean? Wow. 
Yeah, my understanding is that they're considerably easier overall. I still don't want to play other hacks by Haimari. Not when there's such great level or hack creators that I could support. Who don't clearly have something out out to get me. as bad as well. Interesting. We should have laws that prevent hacks like this from getting made. What if we did that? me. God, the hitbox is so fucking fat there. Holy shit. I'm sorry. Language. That's frigged up. Do not plan to play any of the other hypers, no. Link Dead has been playing through the other hypers. And, um... I don't know, I honestly just think Link Dead has run out of content, and so I really have to finish Hyper 6 as quickly as possible, so he can play La Mulana. The only way I can figure that he's playing the other hypers is just he's got no content left. Which is really sad if you think about it. Partnered streamer, been around as long as he has, and he's just run out. And I can't... I can't think of anything sadder than that. So we gotta help him. I mean, it makes sense. Link Dead is a, an amazing SMW player, and so he built his whole brand around I'm gonna play every single hack on SMW Central or something like that. And now, I mean, let's be honest, there just weren't enough SMW hacks. He played them too fast. Well, I'd be headbutting Haimari after Hyper 6. I don't think I'm ever gonna get the opportunity to meet Haimari, but if I did, I would probably just tell him. Man, your hack was really hard. And thanks for making it. We joke around about Haimari, but the reality is, is that... It's not fair to punch down at devs. Everyone's just doing their best out here.
Yeah, Terex, I've heard of the Chico hacks. Also, for what's worth, I, I always thought it was Chinko, which isn't that like the Japanese word for penis, and that always made it funnier to me that that's what I thought his name was. I always thought I saw, um, who was it that used to name his titles that? It was, um, Pogyo. out of here. Oh, I definitely thought I was dead there. I had, like, already given up. I, in my brain, I had resigned. I was like, well, guess I died. Doesn't look that bad. You play it then, man. <laughs> Bust out Zed's nest. Let's go. There's two more rooms after this level. Or after the room I was on. version needed ZSNES, but um, it's been modified to play on hardware now. <sighs> okay, well, I'll fill you in. It may not have looked that bad, but it, it is bad. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks shit. It sucks so much shit.
most super old hacks are broken on hardware and on good emulators because they used ad music back in the days where ad music um, fucked with the ROM too much. That's not really a problem for modern hacks, and some old hacks have been repaired. I don't think we should be repairing old ROM hacks, just like I don't think we should be trying to keep Flash alive for the old Flash games. I just think, I think there are some pieces of media that do deserve to die occasionally. That's all I'm saying. Besides, everyone knows that all the good games were made in Shockwave, and no one managed to keep that fucker alive. So I say burn down Flash, take it with it. Peasant's Quest. That sounds like communist propaganda to me. Shockwave was like the Enterprise edition of uh, Macromedia Flash. And it predated Flash in to some degree. Yeah, but if you're missing software that's constantly out of date, Java's got you covered there now. Just make sure you've got a uh, JVM installed on your computer, and it'll always be out of date. God, why did I hit down so early? What are my thoughts on cryptocurrency and blockchain tech? Um, Bitcoin is a scam. Um, and blockchain is a buzzword.
Look, let me put it this way. Uh... How do I want to word this? Blockchain is a brilliant idea on paper. Um, but I'm not going to implement it into software, just like I'm not going to implement a Fibonacci heap to store data. Sure, on paper, a Fibonacci heap is one of the fastest data structures there are, uh, but in practice, um, you'd be better off storing your data on index cards. Uh, Fibonacci heap is just a data structure in computer science. It's one of those data structures in computer science where someone wrote a paper about it and proved how optimal it is, and then it turns out that in practice it's actually garbage. I say one of because there's a hell of a lot of data structures that fit that bill. Anyway, uh, don't buy Bitcoin. Convert all your money to gold. Store it underneath your mattress. My favorite thing now is when I hear people say like, I've got this old computer that I'm not using anymore, I'm gonna convert it into a Bitcoin mining rig. And I can't help but think um, that they probably don't realize uh, that these days it costs more money to run the PC that will mine Bitcoin, then you will get back in mining Bitcoin. Which is the reason why these days the only people mining Bitcoin are the ones who install it in malware. Because, I mean, that's... That's as cheap as free, right? I think that turned out to be fake, that the Cooking Mama game didn't have, wasn't mining Bitcoin, they were using blockchain for their licensing server, and like, a whole bunch of people who didn't know what that meant were like, oh my god, they're mining Bitcoin. And the devs had to be like, no, 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 our bosses told us we had to put blockchain in it, and so we did. We're not mining Bitcoin, we promise. Which I think is, um, really the only appropriate outcome for putting blockchain in your fucking Cooking Mama game. Oh my god!
Yeah, Cookie Mama was always safe. It, ne it never had any problems. The... The publisher was like, we're gonna use blockchain technology, and then... <laughs> fucking tech journalists, which... By the way, if there's any funnier job title I can think, I, I can't come up with one funnier than tech journalist. There's literally no qualification for that job. It's like, do you like computers? Great, you satisfy 90% of the requirements. Have you ever played Solitaire on Windows 98? That's the rest of the qualifications. I think tech journalism is really funny because if there's anybody in the world that likes explaining things and putting information out on the internet, it's tech people. And so, like, a tech journalist seeing blockchain could have googled blockchain. And I promise, the first few hits on blockchain would have explained in excruciating detail what blockchain is. Far beyond what anybody wants to know about blockchain. But they read it and said, ah, Bitcoin mining, got it. I mean, it's not inherently bad that someone would want to include blockchain in software that doesn't need it. I mean, it's it's buzzworthy. I mean, that's, that's the whole reason they were doing it. Not because it makes sense to implement blockchain in your licensing servers, but... Sorry. Sorry about the cough. Was blockchain technology invented for Bitcoin? I, f I think the answer is yes, right? Like, it's not... They are not synonymous, but I, I seem to recall that the origin of it was for blockchain verification. <sighs> Math wankery. <laughs> Oh, Jericho, that's not a road you want to go down. You do not want to wake up the Bitcoin bros and get them to start explaining to you about, well, we're already on fiat currency anyway. Money's only worth what we all agree it's worth. That's how Bitcoin gets its value.
I hope y'all know that I'm not this snarky usually. You guys just bring out the fun in me. This is fun, right? We're having fun? Fuck that guy. Do I snark at my students all the time? I don't know, ask Jericho, do I snark at my students? Hey Jericho, do I snark at my students? Am I snarky in real life? Okay, well Jericho feels uncomfortable answering that question. Jericho's one of the few students I've had that I would not turn out on his ear for being here. It's honestly been a really long time since a student came in here and razzed me. I've just come to accept it. At this point, all of my students know about my Twitch stream, so at any given time, there's probably more than one student of mine in here. I wonder if all of this quarantine is preventing cross-discussion between students, and maybe... Maybe enough of... Enough time will pass that a whole bunch of them will forget about it, you know? I don't think that'll ever happen. Talking behind my back on zooms. That's fine. Hey, as long as my students are happy. If they're happy at my expense, whatever, I can live with it. I'm honestly too old to give a shit about what a bunch of 17 year olds think about me. <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't. Uh, I just <laughs> can't see a reason to care. Yeah, I only say 17 because I started college at 17. I guess 18 usually. I mean, I'm usually teaching freshmen or sophomores, so... 18 to 20, I guess.
Mm-hmm. Okay. Fuck you. Maybe I should screen scroll here. I remember wearing a Twitch shirt, but there was a period of time where I was wearing my Twitch hoodie into work. Um, I had convinced myself that I wore it to work. If I wore it to work, I could take it off when I get to my office and no one would notice, but that didn't work. But maybe I did wear a shirt one time. Hungry box is in need of a major comeback. At this point, so many of my students know not just that I stream or that I'm on Twitch, but know, like, specifically my handle. Um, and it seems like they just keep passing it around, so I don't, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. I asked one of my senior level students one time, I was like, is it gonna stop ever? And they said, probably not. I'm the most interesting thing that they have around there. I'm like, the only professor who has a interesting life outside of class. classes. You may find it difficult to avoid mine anyway, since I only teach freshman and senior level classes. <laughs> anyway, that's enough on that train. You know, my rate my professor profile was way better when I was a teaching assistant at Clemson than it was when I moved to App State. I don't remember what I, I don't remember what my rate my professor profile looks like now, but it was way better back then. I did get a chili pepper uh, when I was in grad school. They have stopped doing the chili pepper now, which is really good because it's um, super creepy um, to think that they're having like male students rate how hot their female professors are. Like, 
frankly, hugely inappropriate, but inappropriate, and also I got one, so. Curiously, I didn't get a chili pepper at App State, and I'd like to think it's because my students are more respectful than that, but it's also possibly because um, I've gotten less hot in my old age. I'm washed up now. Damn right, Hyper sucks. Get him, Rusta Fuzzy. Thank you for the raid. Yeah, in the dating world, I think it actually works opposite to that. Typically, people who are taken are seen as more attractive. I don't know, you know, like the forbidden fruit. Unattainable. Jericho. I, as I've said before, you're one of the few students I wouldn't turn out on their ear. Maybe if all students could be more chill, I wouldn't have to have any opinion about it, but... There's really nothing complicated about attracting grad students to something. Offer free food. Great. All the grad students are coming. Grad school is entirely uncomplicated. Okay, there's a seminar coming and uh, an invited speaker, and you want to make sure that people show up for the seminar with the invited speaker, otherwise you're going to look really lame. Just offer free pizza. Great, now all the grad students have attended. Boy, howdy, did I got myself in a pickle there. Oh, come on, and now I'm not going to get that cape back. God, this game is fucked up. I 
I'm consistently getting through the water room. Well, not consistently, but you know what I mean. I'm I'm getting through the water room a lot more. So yeah, this is this is progress. I will consider it actual progress if I can make it out of the room. Even if I make it out of the room with no power-ups, I will consider it progress. I know I'm doing great. I've talked about this before on stream about how entering the Twitch world and entering speedrunning in particular has been incredibly humbling to me. Like growing up and even like basically right up to the point that I started speedrunning, I've always been the best person at video games I know. Like I was the person in Mario Party that everyone was playing for second. I was the person in Mario Kart that would finish the race well before everyone else did. Like. Just in general, if I played video games regularly, I was the best person I knew at them. I mean, I, I played online games before where I would get my ass handed to me. Um, so, like, it's not like I was unaware of the fact that there were other people who were good. But, like, you know, Team Fortress 2, I got my ass handed to me constantly. Um, but, like, speedrunning was largely humbling to me, but... It didn't change the fact that I wouldn't say that I, like, developed an identity around being good at video games, but it was something that I knew about myself. Like, I learn, I pick up video games faster than other people. And so, it ha it, it is very hard for me to not compare myself to other people. It just, it makes it harder. It's always been objectively the case that I've been better than other people that I play with. Who did I main in TF2? I have like 1500 hours in Medic and another 500 hours in Spy. I've always played support roles in multiplayer games. I I didn't get into a lot of uh, MMOs, but I did play City of Heroes for a while, and I always played as an empath in City of Heroes. It's like... I don't know. It's like nice to feel like you're contributing even when you don't feel like you're good at the game, and healing is like the easiest way to do that, because... I don't know. Healing, healing in games is often a hard task, like I'm not minimizing it. I mean, I did it, I'm not minimizing it, but... Like, it's a much narrower goal, right? It's like, keep everyone healthy. Just be healthy, right? Like, if you can do that. Uh, and so, like, everyone wants you to be on their team, so it makes you desirable. And if you're any good at it, you get a lot of praise. And it's challenging fun that I don't know I don't know whatever I don't have to explain myself I just like healing I like support roles um I mean both like when I played TF2 I was a pretty aggressive medic like I, I'd kill spies, I I knew how to use my uber, I, I was aware of how to play the whole role, but, like, healer is just always this thing in, like, every game that for some reason nobody wants to do, but I always found it quite fun and rewarding. Yep. 
Ubersaw. Every loadout I had used Ubersaw. Because I would just spot a spy trying to come up from behind and get a full Uber off of him. It's fucking clutch as hell. Yo, Glackham, thanks for the raid. I hope you're doing well. Am I giggling today? I'm not giggling right now. I'm playing Hyper 6, so... My smile and optimism is gone. All around, I've done a bunch of unsatisfying things on stream tonight, right? Like, I was doing well in Super Mario 64 Randomizer, and then I softlocked, and then I got my ass, like, completely trashed uh, by Smartball in the backup race. And now I'm playing Hyper 6, right? Like... I feel like, um, taking, like, a month off of playing Hyper 6 has helped my disposition a lot, because it really doesn't feel that miserable to play this again. Oh my god, I really did not mean to go all that all the way down there. Well, the quality of gameplay that Link Dead has seen here tonight, I don't think he's too stressed out. Link Dead's probably think thinking, well, I probably got a month or two before I've got to play. Lama Lana. Eon, thank you so much for the ray. Or, uh, sorry, for the resub. We need to pick fun things to race, Smartball. Stop trying to get me to play All Stars. All Stars suck shit. The last, like, <laughs> half dozen times I've played. All stars. I suffer my way through two US and then I get to three and I'm like, I just want to quit. You know, I've not- I have zero interest in Final Fantasy XIV. Like, just- I don't have a lot of interest in MMOs that I don't have some intimate familiarity with. Uh, WoW is kind of boring to me conceptually, and most MMOs are kind of boring to me conceptually, but I watched- I watched PA Master learn how to fight X-Death with a group of people during Tai's Akizeme Marathon. And I gotta tell you. That was the most compelling shit. Like, I don't want to watch 14, but I want to watch PA Mats to stream, uh massive boss fights like on repeat like I think I think I would watch that shit so much I don't know what she typically does in 14 but like I just want to watch all of it as long as it's boss fights as long as it's only boss fights but if it's boss fights I want to watch all of it
Um, it looks like I dropped some frames, but I don't think I dropped that many. It might have been on Twitch's end, I don't know. I just looked over at OBS and it does not seem like it's dropped enough frames that I would think that I lost 10 seconds worth of, worth of stream. The thing that I've always hated about the Fugumanon is that it's screen locked, just like um, Fish and Boo is. It's such an obnoxious feature for some enemies, for them to be screen locked like that, because the camera is already, like, the way that it scrolls back and forth is really absurd. And so for, for Fugumanon to follow the screen like that is... Really obnoxious. I thought I was going to get tomorrow off, but I have to get up early for a meeting. I'm really bummed about that. Y'all, I slept in this morning and it was so good. I set my alarm for 10 like I usually do. I know, super early. Um... No, sorry, nine, like I usually do. I teach at ten. Um, but at some point, I just like shut it off and climb back in bed. And I got to sleep till like noon. I rarely plan to sleep in. I usually, I usually get about five or six hours a night. But sometimes when I do sleep in, it's real great. That's what Brad does in WoW, is mount collecting. I seem to recall seeing him talk about mount collecting at some point. He's got like, actually a fuck ton of mounts. Like I think he's on the leaderboard for number of mounts, isn't that a thing? Isn't there a leaderboard for it?
I'm not dropping any frames right now. I maintain a relatively consistent uh, 3000 bit rate. It's fluctuating a bit. Back when I lived in Clemson, my apartment, the best internet I could get was one megabit up. And I gotta tell y'all, two people streaming on that connection was fucking wild. I don't know how many of y'all are from the old days, like from three plus years ago. But I would stream at like 600 bitrate. We liked it that way. No, we didn't. I'm just kidding. Sorry. Yeah, our old apartment was 10 megabits down and 1 megabit up. And we would consistently get a little more than 1 megabit up, but it would never be like more than 1.5. So me and Sky both streamed at 600, which technically oversaturates the one megabit up, but it was it was stable enough for us. Oh my God, it was when when we were moving to Boone because I got this job. The only thing that I looked at when I was looking at places to live was I was calling up ISPs and asking them, "Here's the address of a place I'm considering." What's the internet I can get there? Was she streaming MTG? No, she wasn't streaming MTG. That was back when she was still doing speedrunning stuff. I don't know if there's another way to do it. I have no idea. I I didn't do it that way. I was just calling up ISPs. I was literally calling like Spectrum and I was saying, here's the address I'm considering. What internet can you give me there? That was the only detail I cared about. I mean, our internet is still isn't great. Like, I mean, we get, um, 10 down, no, 10, uh, 100 down, 10 up, um, which is perfectly fine for two streams at a reasonable bitrate. Like, we can both stream at 3,000 bitrate and have plenty left over, but... We actually get consistently better than that anyway. I've done speed tests. I don't know how accurate that is, but it seems like we get better than 10 up. I think we average somewhere between 15 and 20 up, actually. Come on! I'm so upset about that.
Yeah, when we were when we were still in cl- when we were when I was still in grad school, it was consistently less than ten. It was bad. I mean, that was rural South Carolina. Not that I'm any better now. Now I'm in rural North Carolina. That's really the only draw for a big city living to me. I don't... I mean, it wouldn't bother me to live in a big city, but I don't really have any reason to want to. Except for the fact that I could get probably really fucking sick internet. Well, all of South Carolina is ugly, so... Yeah, rural North Carolina is better. Sorry, I lived in South Carolina for almost 30 years. I'm allowed to talk shit about it. <laughs> the state of South Carolina is like... Someone took a perfectly flat, grassy field and was like, We should make a whole state out of this. I was holding down, but I must have let go. I actually think, um, like, downtown Charleston, that area of South Carolina is gorgeous. I, I love the old architecture, I love, I don't know, the, the waterfront. I actually think the Charleston area is beautiful. Now, if they could just copy and paste some of that throughout the rest of the state, and maybe find and replace racism, I think, uh, I think they'd really have something there. Clemson area is awful. I think that's the thing that drove me crazy about living in Clemson, was that you had to go like an hour to find civilization. I mean, Greenville is beautiful. Like, Greenville as a city is beautiful. But... Yeah, unless you're at a college in a major metropolitan city or something, they tend to be in really isolated rural areas for whatever reason. At least that's what it feels like to me. My Obviously my college experiences are limited to the colleges I've been around and at, so...
That's it. Like that, this attempt is done. Well, considering I was going to run into him, I should have slowed down for the cape spin, but I was afraid that if I lost peace speed that it was just- my situation was just gonna get worse. I mean, it's frame perfect, but it's frame parity as well. Like, it's- it's a one frame window, but it's every other frame. That's the way cape spinning works. Yeah, Boon doesn't have a lot of great options unless you're willing to pay a decent amount, and students probably aren't going to be able to pay that decent amount. Night 88. That was one nice thing about living in Clemson, though. Uh, my first apartment was a $325 rent, and my last apartment was a $600 rent. And it wasn't exactly great, but for those prices, it was pretty good. I think I may be misrepresenting that 325 one though. It was a split lease uh, rent, which meant that I was sharing it with another person, and I only had to pay 325 of it. But but once me and Sky moved in together, then we got a place to ourselves, obviously. I didn't say it was a good apartment. But like, that's what you get in rural South Carolina. Is you get rent that's dirt cheap. But I mean, the last apartment that we lived in in Clemson was, um, two bedrooms, one bath. Um, I don't remember what the square footage was, but it was like 600. I think by the time we left, our rent had been raised to like 650, but... I mean, God, it was so cheap. And I was on a grad student stipend, so depending on the year, I was only making fifteen to twenty thousand a year, and could afford to live in a decent apartment that wasn't a complete shithole, and eat out occasionally. And it was a small place. Don't get me wrong, but the price was right for sure. My first apartment was kind of a shithole in grad school. I have since not allowed myself to live in shitholes, if I could help it.
Jesus. See what I'm talking about? The camera scrolls wonky, and that moves the Fugu Man in, in ways that he shouldn't move. I think what makes this level so bad is not that it's outright harder than other levels. I don't actually think, just in my limited experience, I don't think that this level is harder than, like, Left Barrier Tower, for instance. But it's the fact that it's kind of challenging for a way longer stretch of time. And I gotta tell you, death by a thousand paper cuts is way worse than just one clean blow. Like, if I'm gonna get fucked up in a level, I'd really rather it just be like one bullet bill to the face rather than, hey, do you think you can survive this grueling gauntlet for 20 minutes? Even this stuff is not harder than Left Barrier Tower. Left Barrier Tower was, for what it was, a lot more difficult. But like as one clean, straight blow, right? Did you see where, um, when the quarantine, well, I mean, the quarantine's still going on, but when the quarantine started, Facebook was telling its employees that they could work remotely, but that they would pay them on a, um, sliding scale based on the cost of living wherever they decided to quarantine. Thought I was gonna die. I just want to get through the Cooper room once. I think I could feel really empowered to like make progress if I could get out of the Cooper room once, one time.
Yeah, Pansy's, um... Pansy's Animal Crossing streams are comfy as heck. I love that they buckled in for like a really long stream and then found... found the... one of the characters they were looking for almost instantly though. Come on! <sighs> I'm just... Tired of getting fucked. I specifically said that I don't mind RNG when it works in my favor, and now it's not working in my favor. I am internally consistent. My logic has not been broken yet.
Um, if you hold down while you're swimming, you won't swim up pretty much at all. It's a good way to swim just perfectly horizontally. If you don't press anything on the D-pad, you'll swim up a little bit, and if you hold up, you swim up very fast. Hi Bills, thanks for the host. I appreciate you. We're out here doing some video gaming. Wow. I'm fun, what would make you say that? Is it because I'm playing Hyper Six? So this is how high you swim when you hold down. You swim like this. If I don't press anything, I swim like this. And if I hold up, I swim up much faster. Shut up. Shut up! making too much noise. He's gonna alert the fuzz. So I had to whack him.
fuck that guy in particular. Fuck, I forgot. I don't remember the pattern here. I didn't remember the pattern! Yo, I'm gonna be real with you, that's kinda fucked up. pattern is the enemies fall left, right, left, so I have to go right, left, right. Yeah, there's, there's a double in there, but I don't remember where it is. Oops. After that room, there's two more rooms, which I think they're going to be hard, but they seem really doable. Like, just watching them, I look at them and I think, I, I can do those rooms. They're not, they're not going to be trivial, but they seem really doable. Once we get through the Koopa room, um, then I will study the next two rooms to try to give me an edge. The pea balloon section seems pretty tough, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there's, there are some challenging parts to the pea balloon section. But the room after that, if I'm not mistaken, is the one that you can cheese by flying through it, if I remember correctly. The Bowser fight is honestly the part that makes me the most nervous because everyone I've ever seen do the Bowser fight has cheesed it by damage boosting to beat it and I'm worried that if I were to try to damage boost it I would not succeed and if I were to try to play it casually I've got nothing to go off of and I would only infrequently get there so I can't really learn a pattern or learn what I need to do. I'm, I'm thinking that the right answer is to just study how the cheese works and do that. can walk me through your strat. That'd be great if you could at some point, Yumar. I probably have a little... I keep saying Yumar, but I'm pretty sure you pronounce it Umar. Anyway, um... I'm not there yet, so I don't need it yet, but I might take you up on that.
Um, I have made progress. I will consider it substantial progress if I can get out of the room I've been stuck in. I've been getting pretty consistently to the room after the water room, and I would like to beat that room tonight. That's that's what I'd like for it to happen. I'm not gonna, like, stream until I get it, but I'd like to. Uh, Jericho, yes. Few can pronounce the names in La Milana. It's because most of them are the names of, like, Sumerian gods in, Ar in the Arcadian language, and... What are the odds that's the last room? Zero. We already know how many rooms there are. The Koopa room is, um... So the Koopa room's the furthest I've been. There's two more rooms after that and then the boss fight. I mean, some of the bosses are easier to pronounce than others. Bahamut, Baphomet. Pazuzu. Yeah, I don't think you've been to the, um, to the one field that Liz is... I mean, some, there's probably been tablets that mentioned it, but you haven't been to the field that has some of the bosses with the obnoxious names. But they're named, like, Ushum and, uh, Umudabrutu and Ushumagalu, and there's just, like, a lot of really challenging names to work through. My experience with hard tricks and speedrunning has always gone... Every hard trick I've ever tried to learn in speedrunning has gone exactly the same way. 100% of them. They've all gone exactly the same way. I watch the trick. I perform it flawlessly on my first try. And then I can't repeat it for another several hours. Oxhead and Horseface have actual names, but even the game calls them Oxhead and Horseface, if I remember correctly. I don't remember what their actual mythological names are. They're Chinese, if I remember correctly. Um, so for me, for longer games, I prefer to start off by just doing runs, even if they're extraordinarily bad, just start off by doing runs, because I think, I think it's helpful to build up some knowledge about the game that you don't get from, like, trying to learn a speedrun. A lot of times, if you try to learn a speedrun, it's very narrow-focused, like, you have to do exactly these things in exactly these locations, and if anything goes wrong, you'll have no clue what to do. Um... And I think you gain a lot of that uh, game knowledge and intuition based on um, from just doing some attempts. For longer runs, I definitely think that the, perf the preferred way to do it is to just do runs with no strats and then just add in little strats here and there.
Like, take my 380 star as an example. I just did a bunch of runs trying to get, like, a decent time with no real strats. And then I've slowly incorporated things like understanding better movement or trying to do an individual trick here or there. Um, and in time, I'll eventually learn more, but I think... I think, I think you can't, it, it's really hard to get out of the lab if you try to just like learn it right out the gate. Cause you can get caught up in the hell of, okay, I can't do this trick well enough. So I need to sit here and practice it until, until I can get it. And now congrats, you've successfully learned 1% of the run after several days. Mezuki and Gozuki. I thought they had <clears throat> other names, but I wouldn't be surprised if they sort of appear in multiple mythologies as well. I wish I had more interest in fighting games. I think I don't really enjoy a lot of <clears throat> directly competitive games though, so I don't think fighting games are really for me anyway. <clears throat> oh, those assholes are still coming this way? Fuck. Hold on, hold, no, actually, like, for real, hold on a second. Did the bottom barrier despawn? <clears throat> Wouldn't that be really good? No, the bottom's definitely not tiles, it's definitely a sprite interaction. <clears throat> I don't think... I'm not sure if it would help enough, though. Like, you could definitely swim under the level, but I worry about swimming under spikes, and also, at the same time, you still have to do most of the level, like, normal, right? That would only spare you, like, one little bit. Cartridge blowers, you have awful taste. Thank you for the resub. Yo, take it easy, Pansy. We were singing your praises about your stream earlier today, by the way. About how it was comfy as heck. There's Kaizo blocks there. I've never touched those uh, platforms before, so I've never had cause to know that.
I'm gonna try to give it one good attempt back at the, um, the, the Koopa room. If I can get to the Koopa room pretty quick, then it'll be my last attempt. These are good. Hey, Mr. Mess, thanks for the raid. Fuck. That's progress. <clears throat> Alright. Um, I was gonna cut stream right then, but since we got that generous raid from Mr. Mez, I'll, um, I'll stick around for another ten minutes or so. Welcome everybody. Hey Kalka, how you doing, man?
Sorry you're catching me right at the end of my stream, man. I apologize for that, but... But thank you nonetheless. This hack sucks. <laughs> yep, Dan. Yep. Wrong. Maybe one day, Link Dead will have to play La Milana because I did all this shit. Hopefully someone takes the time to explain to him that in La Milana you, uh, actually have to beat Hell Temple. It's not possible to beat the game without it. Otherwise he'll be very disappointed when he goes to try to beat the game and hasn't completed it yet. Yeah, I want him to have the real clear tonic experience with La Milana. <clears throat> I want him to read the hard mode tablet. Does that mean I'll also beat Special World? No. Why would I do that? This is definitely not a Kaizo hack. This is, first off, harder than most Kaizo hacks. And second, it lacks a lot of the features or qualities that make a Kaizo hack a Kaizo hack. This is just an obnoxiously difficult hack, which is its own thing. Yeah, I mean, BK maintains that uh, it was not designed for you to, it was not designed for save state use, but. I don't know. I think whether it's designed for save states or not, it's still bullshit, so I don't think it really matters. So this, this half of the level, from the checkpoint onward, is six rooms followed by a multi-part boss fight. Um, I've gotten to the end of the fourth room and entered the fifth room. That's, that's the progress I've made so far. This is the last real level. The actual final level is trivial. Trivial nonsense. So it doesn't count.
Alright, this is my last attempt for the night. It's okay, we're not dead yet. Uh, now we're fucked. It's horrible. Anyway, I'll play more tomorrow. See you then.